In our app config 3, if you look at this particular bean, the only thing that we have done is that we created a bean object and uh, returned the same. There's no dependency injection done here, as well as there's no wiring done here. Spring is smart enough to automatically do all these things also. For example, if I get rid of this, and if I try to run the program, of course the application is gonna fail because at this point in time, our program, which is using app config 3, is trying to look for a bean whose name is JDBC DAO. And in this app config 3, we don't have any bean matching that particular name or data type. This is where we have to tell Spring that, hey, go and look in a package such as this code.binode.dao and load all the beans from there. Now, how does the Spring know which class to load from here? For that, we have to go to this particular class and annotate the same with at component. And we can optionally give a name such as, for example, I can say JDBC DAO like this. If I don't give the name over here, it'll take the same name as the class name, but starting with a lowercase letter. So since we are looking for a specific name here, let's give this name as JDBC DAO. And in order to tell Spring that you have to scan all the components from this package, we go to our app config 3 and add an annotation here at component scan and then say here base packages equals to an array of strings representing different packages. Now since it says base package, I can simply say code.vinod but then it will start scanning everywhere including CFG, DAO, programs and other places. It is always a good practice to narrow it down to specific packages. So I'm going to give code.vinode.dao and now Spring looking at this particular component scan goes to this particular package code.vinode.dao and any other sub packages if exist and then try to load all the components. Now the components are nothing but the classes that are annotated as at component. So dummy product DAO is not a component because it's not been marked over here. But the JDBC product DAO is marked with at component. So this qualifies. And also it has got a couple of auto wirings done, which means that one of the bean like data source is automatically wired to this and connection is not formed. So there is no dependency injection done over here. And now I should be able to run the code, access this bean JDBC DAO, while we did not instantiate, Spring automatically created the same. So let's save the code and go back to our application, run the application to see the result. Let's go back to the JDBC product DAO. A component is a very generic name, depending on what kind of class this is. For example, is this a class that belongs to the service tier which contains business logic or does it contain data access logic so that means it belongs to a repository or DAO layer or is it a web controller based on that you have specific type of component annotations so instead of giving this I can also give at the rate controller though it doesn't make any sense here because it's not a controller but this would still work so let's go and check it out by running the code and notice it works. So instead of controller, I can also give as a repository, which is nothing but a DAO. So I'm going to run the code. It still works. I can also give here a service. Typically services are nothing but business logic classes. And this is not a business logic class, but at service also qualify for component scan. You can also give a at configuration. And absolutely this is not a configuration class, but still this is going to work. And if you are working with a web application, you also have another annotation called REST controller and that also would work. But the best suited for this particular class because this being a DAO, which is nothing but a repository, the annotation that you should be using is a repository. Now, as we saw earlier, it does not matter what annotation you used, it still is qualified for component scan. However, depending on the environment that your application is running, a specific annotation that you use may have a specific impact. For example, in an MVC application, a class annotated as at controller has some special privileges. So it's a good practice to identify what kind of class that you have and then annotate them accordingly as at controller, at service or at repository.